after a short break at 270 we are back little sis back uh, and it is uh, really uh, uh, a, a wonderful feeling just like uh, vijay said it is just like the mega movies or serials were in uh, all the participants against get back together everybody had their own reasons uh, in fact i was working on a book and i hope to complete it by the next week um uh, everybody was engaged uh, on uh, different issues but it is really wonderful to be back with the extended family in fact our family of uh, uh, littles so we are on the 271st session of legal empowerment through interaction lecture series and today whom we could identify other than our justice rampumar sir to restart the uh, i would say season 3 uh, the terminology that is in vogue nowadays uh, of of littles and uh, we are on a specific topic judge made law in criminal trials this is lecture number 1 on that topic and uh, it's a private complaint cannot be dismissed at the pre cognition stage is 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 uh, the specific topic that uh, we have uh, chosen and uh, uh, may request prem to uh, uh, have a short uh, introductory remarks on this restart of littles and then we'll go out to the speaker just as ramp master prem over to you well good evening all actually i am taken by a surprise that i have to introduce this uh, particular topic judge me law in the criminal trial and this is lecture number 1 regarding a private complaint cannot be dismissed at the pre cognition stage now the desirability of judicial law making it has been uh, somewhat like a subject of lively debate both in the civil as well as the common law countries and this has been universally accepted that the courts in the democracies they should never arrogate to themselves unrestricted legislative power because judiciary is rarely a subject to the same democratic accountability as legislatures but of course when the existing statutes and the precedents are outmoded or maybe they are manifestly unfair as applied to specific cases should not the judges be able to lay down the law in order to achieve what they conceive to be the just results or to avoid what they consider unjust results now judge made law that's an independent source of law in the common law systems as far as we are concerned because when the statute law impinges or lacks in many areas all such tracks would remain predominantly the product of these judicial decisions now as we know legal philosophical writing by great thinkers in the natural law tradition that has influenced the english judges in the development of the law of tort in the 18th century and of course robert joseph he had a very very strong influence on the development of the law of contract in the 19th century now if we speak about the 18th century itself we can see lord mansfield who was the chief justice of the court of the king's bench for more than three decades of course 32 to, to be very precise he relied on the first principles the mercantile custom and borrowing from the civil law to adapt the english law to the emerging commercial needs of his time and some of his judgments on contract and commercial law they still continue to be cited in our courts and uh, of course one should not be unmindful of uh, dono versus stevenson that has become the very source of the modern law of negligence in the common law and of course another great decision was by uh, justice uh, john marshall of the united states supreme court in marbury versus madison of 1803 and with a quote of professor dicey i would just wind up by saying that professor dicey who was a great constitutional expert and who had a high opinion about this judge made laws in one of his lectures he stated the judicial legislation that aims to a very very far greater extent than the enactments which are passed by the parliaments do at the maintenance of the logic or the symmetry of the law and today we have justice ram kumar uh, with the topic of i think it is lecture number 1 regarding pre cognition stage dismissals which of course we have justice ram kumar himself citing more than 3 rulings in the kerala high court and which of course was later on cited by justice kishoreddy in the latest judgment 
So over to you, Justice Ram Kumar, sir, for your. Uh, Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Prem. Thank you. Whether you call it judicial activism or judicial adventurism or judicial overreach, the fact remains that there are certain legislative vacuums in statute law calling for judicial fillers for the smooth administration of justice. In the context of judicial legislation, there is, however, a piece of caution by Oliver Wendell Holmes of the Supreme Court of United States in his dissenting judgment opinion, dissenting opinion in Southern Pacific versus Jensen, 244 US 205 at 221, way back in 1917. I quote the great jurist, the, the law lord held, I recognize without hesitation that judges do and must legislate but they can do so only interstitially. They are confined from molar to molecular motions. A common law judge cannot say, I think the doctrine of consideration a bit of historical nonsense and I shall not enforce in my court. I unquote. Decades later, Justice V.R. Krishnayar, as he then was of the Kerala High Court, was not in a different way when he in his Concurring opinion observed on behalf of a tuition bench comprising also of Justice P.T. Raman Nair. The great judge observed thus, any interpretation out of many which will advance the remedy and suppress the mischief may be adopted by the court, departing from the dictionary meaning and even the popular meaning of the words used. Although judicial interpretation cannot be the last refuge of the incompetent draftsman so as to rope in categories in the name of supposed injustice, which the words of the legislation might have left out. In short, judges may reread the law, hopefully or helpfully, but not rewrite the law compassionately. This was the observation made by the judge in his concurring opinion. In John versus Deputy, P.T. John versus Deputy Chief Accountant, Electrical Revenue Billing Unit, 1970, KLT 805. Blissfully ignorant of or conveniently burying the above words of caution, I had also ventured to transgress into the forbidden field of rewriting by way of fillers in the statute law by holding in Biju Purushottaman versus State of Kerala, 2008, 3 KLT 85, corresponding to 2000. 8 Criminal Law Journal 4488 that where a private complaint on the face of it does not contain any of the ingredients of an offense, a power does exist to the court to terminate or abort the case at the threshold and it, such a power cannot be denied to a criminal court. What troubled my mind was that, the, that if the magistrate were to dismiss the complaint by resort to section 203, CRPC, he could do so only after taking cognizance of the offense. That is, which is only the two, section 203 is the only provision the CRPC for dismissing on merit a private complaint. Now, such dismissal could be accomplished only after the unavoidable process of taking cognizance of an offense. Why should the precious time of the court be wasted in an exercise which, in the long run, is destined, destined to be futile? That was the main uh, factor which troubled my mind. It was therefore held that when the complaint ex specie does not spell out any offense at all, the criminal court can reject the complaint instead of dismissing. It can at the threshold reject the complaint uh, instead of proceeding to take cognizance of the offense and thereafter dismissing the complaint as one without any purpose. Now, a former district judge of Kerala who was later elevated to the High Court, used to observe as he was a district judge. If my judgments are affirmed by the High Court, I'll be happy because I was able to do justice in advance. If on the contrary, my judgments are reversed by the High Court, I am happier because my illegality was not perpetrated. This should be the mindset of every judicial officer in the country. He, he should not be 
troubled by the reversal of his verdicts, right or wrong. Now, we used to remark in the Kerala Judicial Academy that this should be the mind, mindset of every judicial officer. They should never get dejected by the reversal of their verdict by the Superior Court. But I have heard one judge of the Kerala High Court and who was later elevated to the Supreme Court who used to observe in open court that it is high time that judges whose verdicts are assailed before superior courts should get representation before such superior courts. <laughs> Probably some seniors among you may, may remember who the judge was. I'm not revealing the name. The reason why I made a reference to doing justice in advance is the fact that I was able to do justice in advance by holding that criminal courts can only reject at the threshold a complaint which does not make out any offense. My view in Biju Purushottaman later on got the imprimatur of the highest court of the country in Mahmud Ul Rahman versus Kazir Mohammed Tunda, here 2015 Supreme Court 2195, rendered by Justice Kurian Joseph. Of course, without reference to my verdict. Incidentally, Biju Purushottaman is also a case in which I had occasion to note the interdict under section 162 on CRPC. That is, that interdict, that embargo under 162 on CRPC is confined only to an investigation by a police under chapter 12 CRPC. And it does not operate to an investigation under section 203, one, class 1 of section 203 CRPC by the police. That is, I am leaving, I am having some respiratory ailments disabling me from speaking for longer duration. Therefore, I leave it to the floor for a useful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, as we open up, may I go directly to Justice M.V. Ramana, sir? How are you, Mr. Chang? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. All well, sir. Mr. Prem, sir. Good evening, sir. Namaste. After a long time, I've been meeting you. <laughs> yes. Hmm? <coughs> I think I, I have joined your bandwagon now. Uh, yeah. Hmm? So very nice to see all of you. Okay. Someone, I think Mr. Prem can start the discussion. I think he can he can start as someone who is interested to start. Or Mr. Shyam himself. Sir, uh, like uh, Ram Kumar, sir, he's a confirmed criminal. I am a civilized criminal. <laughs> So I think uh, uh, we can uh, uh, start the balls rolling by Dilip, sir. No, one question, one question I'd like to ask. Yeah, please, please. Sir. Now, now the, the issue is whether a complaint can be dismissed at or rejected at threshold. Is there any embargo or is there any bar? Because reject, dismissal, you can have only under section 203 which says the magistrate after recording the own statement and conducting the inquiry, if any, may dismiss the complaint. But this is absolutely a frivolous complaint is there. Complaint is exactly. There. If on the face of it, it is totally frivolous. Is it necessary that we must examine all the witnesses who whomsoever produced by the complaint? Not necessary. Are even why, why, examine, why examine even the complaint? Yes. Once we can examine complaint, complainant, and the court is satisfied that the, either the complaint or the statement of the complaint did not make out any substance or attract any offense. Then is it not open for the court to straight away reject or dismiss the complaint under 203? 203, yes, after taking the so what But what not before. Power, power, to be, power being exercised by the court at the state should necessarily be in terms of section 203. Isn't so? Correctly. Okay. But precognizance dismissal is not called contemplated. Dismissal at the precognizance stage is not contemplated. By no, what, sir, one, one clarification is required, sir. What is, what is cognizance then? Cognizance on a private complaint means if the magistrate, after uh, examining, reading the private complaint, uh, mm. applies his mind for the purpose of proceeding under Chapter 15 CRPC. Mm. If he decides to proceed under Chapter 15 CRPC, he has taken cognizance. He need not even actually record this own statement. If he, is, he has taken the decision to proceed under Chapter 15, he can be said to have taken cognizance of the offense. Why, why uh, unnecessarily waste the 
precious time of the court in a case where the complaint on the face of it does not make out any open so reject it don't don't wait for dismissal mm -hmm. then we you mean to say the women to say that we need not go back to her section 190 190 is the source of taking cognizance the four sources mm. private complaint police report uh, information by from a non police officer judge's own uh, uh, often being committed in the very presence of the judge of the magistrate etc they are the sources of cognizance Okay, thank you, thank you, Arun sir. Okay, you are back. Thank you, sir, and uh, it's indeed uh, nice to see you back. Uh, and in fact, we also took some break, so I think uh, we'll again uh, meet again and again on this platform, so that uh, we can have uh, uh, constructive exchanges of uh, of thoughts and ideas. Yes, yes. The very, very, very nice uh, thing to see all of you. It's a long, long time, and I can make myself available for all the sessions hereafter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I used to be, you know, I used to be very busy with my work. Of course, I'm not supposed to say that. There can't be any excuses to avoid a program of this nature. Yet, now I find a lot of time, so I can join you almost every week. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Dilip, sir. Thank you, Sam. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Nice to meet you again in this forum. Now, how well I can articulate uh, my uh, comment on this, I don't know because I am not. Uh, I have not practiced criminal law as such, but theoretically, I, I can. I think I can uh, suggest my reasoning for supporting Ram Kumar's opinion that it can be rejected at the threshold. One is that what is a complaint? Organization should be taken upon a complaint. What is a complaint? Who be says that meets any allegation made orally or in writing to a magistrate with a view to his taking action under this code that some person, whether known or unknown, has committed an offense. Has committed an offense. So there should be an indication that the offense has been committed by that person. And what is an offense that is defined in section 2N? 2N uh, means any act or omission made punishable by any law for the time being in force and includes any act in respect of which a complaint may be made under section 2 and in respect of which. So an offense as an integral part of a complaint or there, an, an offense should be spelt out in the complaint itself for a court to take organization. Then section 190A says, section 190, subject to the provisions of this chapter, any magistrate of the first class or any magistrate of the second class, specially empowered in this behalf under subsection two, may take cognizance of any offense, any offense, only taking cognizance of an offense upon receiving a complaint of facts which constitute such offense. So the facts should constitute an offense, then only the court is bound to take organizations. Otherwise, they can reject the complaint. The court can reject the complaint saying that no offense is constituted by the facts included in the complaint. And uh, I think that alone can, I can, I mean, submit regarding uh, this question. Thank you, Dilip, sir. Any comments on that, Ram Kumar, sir? He's perfectly right. Because the facts constituting an offense should be there in a complaint. So if the complaint is bereft of the facts constituting the offense, then there is no complaint at all regarding a, the commission of an offense. When there is no offense made out in the complaint, why the precious time of the court should be wasted by the process of taking cognizance, examining the complainant or not? Then if witnesses are present, examining them, then if necessary, proceed to 202 then conduct an inquiry, order an investigation, etc., and ultimately dismissing the complaint under section 203, holding that complaint does not on the face of it make out an offense. Why? Yes. 
Sir, we recognize the presence of Justice P.S. Narayana as well as Justice Kondaram, sir. Kondaram, sir, your comments. Sir, I have no comments, sir. I'm only listener. That's all. <laughs> God will, sir. Today, because I was in, uh, happened to be in Delhi, Honorable uh, former Chief Justice, uh, you know, I had to have a courtesy call on him and then wish him all the best. So, staying in Delhi and uh, I missed out the uh, 15 20 minutes. Uh, but I promise next time onwards I won't miss. Because it's a yeah, learning from for me, uh, the, especially criminal law. That's the one area where I never, never had any. You know, if we have food, then I'll be able to experiment. Unfortunately, I never had that criminal food anytime. Sir, thank you. And uh, uh, Shankar Raman, sir, your, your thoughts on this topic. I'm purely on the civil side. So, just my daughter is going to enroll. So, for the first time, she is enrolled. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome to the phone. Uh, take all your blessings, sir. Definitely. Sir. Okay. Okay. Completed in uh, School of Excellence, Chennai. Very good. Okay. Good, good, good. Nice to meet you. Waiting for enrollment. Very good, very good. His we'll great grandfather uh, had written the English to Malayalam dictionary, Ramalingam Pillai, official translator. Ah, Ramalingam Pillai, yes. Uh, our great grandfather. I see. Oh, very good. My father was a classmate of Subramanian Bhoti. I got that. Okay. About high school Toronto. retired, man. It still continues to be the classic piece. Uh, yes. uh, almost every uh, uh, lawyer's library has at least one book. Yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's a precious uh, asset to any, any, any library. So, Prem, let us get this uh, subject a bit forward. Your comments. Well, to articulate more, although the complaints are being dismissed by the magistrates, at the precognition stage, these are dismissals without really noticing the distinction between dismissal of a complaint, as said by Justice Ram Kumar under Section 203 CRPC, which comes at the post-cognition stage. And rejection of the complaint is one of the precognition stage. <clears throat> now, dismissal at the precognition stage, it can only be treated as a rejection. Now, one of the earliest decisions on this particular point is a three judges bench decision of the Supreme Court speaking through Justice Raghubir Dayal with two other great judges, Justice Subarao and Justice Mudholkar, which you see in Nagraj was a state of Mysore. The citation is AR 1964, Supreme Court 269. Where Justice Dayal went on to hold that even when prosecution, that is a case where a prosecution lacks action, sanction. So when a prosecution itself could not have been instituted without a proper sanction from the government, then the court is at liberty to reject the complaint. See the words used. And now the court further went on to explain that when a proceeding is void, because in such a situation, the proceeding itself would be void. If the proceeding is void, automatically court is not competent to pass any orders except an order that the proceeding has to be dropped forthwith and reject the complaint. Now, the next judgment in one was case, again, in one case, Supreme Court acquitted the accused for want of prosecution sanction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Mr. Mr. Brain, sorry to interdict. Yes, sir. Requirement of a sanction order is a mere technicality. Absolutely true. And it can be considered, it can be considered even at, an, at a later stage. At a later stage. But but this is this was a case, sir. This was a case where the Supreme Court was dealing with the earlier CRPC of 1898 and section 132 therein. Not the CRPC of 1973. Now this is a 64 judgment. Now another judgment by the Supreme Court was during the year 2005 in Kraft Finance Limited case, which is 2005 7 SEC 467, where the Supreme Court goes on to hold that after taking cognizance, kindly see 
what the Supreme Court holds. After taking cognizance and examining the complaint and oath, as has been told by Justice Ramana, the court can even then come to a conclusion that no case is made for issuance of process. And still the court can reject the complaint, even without going for a dismissal under 203. Now, in this particular judgment, the Supreme Court even went on to observe that there are cases where the magistrates will refuse to take cognizance and return the very complaint to the complainant. That practice, uh, we cannot attest to that practice. But still, the Supreme Court goes on to say that the magistrate can return the complaint to the complainant. Now, in as far as Kerala is concerned, the first of the series of the judgments were delivered by Justice Jankumar in Raju Purangara versus Kodiyeri Balagishan instead of Biju Purushottaman. I think it was Raju Purangara was first in the series. Is it true? Well, I think so, sir. I think so, because Raju Purangara was first. That was followed. You may be right. You may be right. Well, Jesse Ram Kumar goes on to hold that in a case, because there is an inherent power in every magistrate to reject the complaint, at a precognizant stage, if the complaint, it does not make out the offense which is alleged in that particular complaint, so in such a case, no law would oblige or no law would mandate that magistrate Now you proceed to section 200 CRPC or to the subsequent sections of chapter 15 and thereby take cognizance. So in such cases, any magistrate, he has got the absolute power to reject the complaint at that threshold. Now, Biju Purushottaman, that is 2003 KLT 85, Phone out this Raju Purang Purangara, where again he held that the power of dismissal of the complaint that is not available to the magistrate at the threshold because it is only at the stage of 203. Prior to that, it is only rejection. And subsequently, again, Justice Jam Kumar had another decision, Dragesh was the state of Kerala. That is 2002 KLT 557, that the magistrate had absolutely no jurisdiction to dismiss the complaint at a precognizant stage. And what he can do at that particular stage is only rejection of the complaint. And much relevant is to note, in this 2000 decision, Justice Ram Kumar did not either advert to Biju Purushottaman or to Raju Purangara. It was an independent decision by itself. And of course, as Ram Kumar said, said, this particular view we find in the Supreme Court judgment of Mahmood versus Khazir, by Justice Kurian Joseph, year 2015 Supreme Court 2195, where again, the Supreme Court also held that if the complaint, on the very face of the complaint, it does not disclose the commission of any offense, then the magistrate cannot even take cognizance of that particular complaint, of that particular offense. And the complaint needs to be simply rejected. Then the Kerala series was followed again by uh, Justice Kamal Pasha in Selim versus George, 2017, Volume 2, KLT 1079. Of course, uh, no discussions were cited. I think it was never cited by the lawyers also. And Justice Kamal Pasha also went on to hold that the court ought to have rejected the complaint in that particular case at the very precognizant stage. And the latest judgment by Justice Narayana Pisharadi has followed all these judgments in Shailaja versus VACB, 2021, 2KLT 294. So this is all, was, uh, all what I have to say regarding this particular topic. And uh, for more deliberations, I leave it to the floor. I, I'll do one thing. I'll uh, uh, allow the participants to unmute whoever want to make a comment show hey if you have got anything to say you can unmute and say and once one speaker is there others may kindly uh, remain muted uh, uh ramana sir prem uh, ramana sir all others can unmute there is no problem because you are at liberty to unmute yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Yeah, please, no I... sir. yeah please yeah please sir in fact uh, uh ramana sir's view in this Biju prashantman's case uh, the normally uh, as a poxo court judge um, i'm also entertaining private complaints on poxo cases under section 33 just like uh, magistrates are doing 
So I've seen uh, the the way in which uh, to overcome the bar uh, as per the decision of the High Court in Biju Purushottaman. Normally, lawyers are uh, requesting the magistrates to forward the complaint under 163 CRPC to the police, uh, saying that uh, as uh, a settled position of law, Ram Kumar sir was uh, repeatedly reminding us we are uh, one chapter 14 complaint is filed and uh, 200 is chapter 15, then only cognizance is taken. So before taking cognizance, uh, magistrates are invoking power under section 156.3. That is not a cognizance at all. So the lawyers are uh, arguing that uh, the bar under the decision of Piju Purushottaman uh, will not apply to a case wherein a magistrate is invoking its power under section 156.3 CRPC. So <clears throat> I only want to supplement that uh, I've seen even recent decision of the uh, Kerala High Court by His Lordship Justice Kausar also in a case from Lakshadweep, a private complaint on a POXO Act uh, offenses was forwarded under section 153 CRPC. The accused rushed to the Honorable High Court and uh, the complaint was quashed. So if the uh, uh, special judge of POXO Act cases had applied the dictum in Biju Purushottaman, the party need not have approached the Honorable High Court to cast the proceedings. So that is also an area wherein the dictum in Biju Purushottaman's case can be applied because even in cases where the parties are complainants are requesting the court to forward the complaint under section 153 instead of proceeding further uh, under chapter 15, then also the complaint can be rejected. And in that decision, I think uh, Supreme Court judgments also is there on that point that uh, there shall not be a mechanical forwarding of the complaint under section 153 by a magistrate and the magistrate has to uh, uh, re re uh, read the complaint and uh, having satisfied that it is a fit case to be forwarded to the police under 156.3 CRPC, then only it can be uh, forwarded. So uh, as uh, uh, told by Ram Kumar sir, if on reading the complaint, if the magistrate finds that there is nothing in it, then also instead of uh, forwarding the complaint under 156.3 CRPC, can be rejected. That is what I want to supplement. Thank you. The view yeah. that 156.3 power can be exercised only at the pre cognition stage is no more good law after Justice Nariman's judgment. Is it not? Hmm. Vinubai, Haribai. Uh, Vinubai, Haribai, 2000, two, 2019 Supreme Court. Yes. Yeah, that power can be exercised up to the commencement of trial. Of course. Earlier, three judge bench rulings have been <laughs> ignored and explained. <laughs> yes. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir, sure. Allowed to deviate a bit. Uh, I just wanted to know if section two hundred and section one ninety two is read together. Then, uh, presumably, after reading those sections, it is presumed that the chief judicial magistrate and the magistrate to whom the matter is being transferred over under section 192, if both the magistrate examines the complainant and the witnesses and thereafter take, take cognizance, then doesn't it amount to double taking a double cognizance of the offense? Well, how? Why? Because, sir, uh, in section 200, uh, it says mm. that. Where are after taking cognizance. A magistrate after taking cognizance of the mm. and examining the complaint upon oath. And thereafter, this provision comes that provided the magistrate makes uh, that if the magistrate makes over the case to another magistrate under section 192 after examining the complainant and its witnesses, the latter magistrate need not examine them. Now, yes. suppose if the latter magistrate examines them under section 192, or maybe the chief judicial magistrate who is taking cognizance of the offense after examining the complainant and thereafter transfers the case under section 192 to a magistrate, subordinated it to him of the first class, and that latter magistrate again re-examines the complainant and the witnesses and takes cognizance of the particular offences for which the offences have been committed, then doesn't it amount to taking double cognizance? No, you see, there, there's a specific provision which says, once the, the earlier magistrate has taken cognizance by examining the complainant and the witnesses, 
this the transferee magistrate need not do that. So what if the transferee magistrate examines them? So it is not mandatory. No, it is not. See. See, even if you read section 192, kindly read section 192. Any CJM may after taking cognizance of the offenses. So cognizance of offenses already it is taken. And now come to class two. Any magistrate of the first class empowered in this behalf by the CJM may after taking cognizance of an offense make over the case for inquiry or trial to such other competent magistrate as the CJM may. How can the, that be double cognizance? No, I'm trying to no, I mean, if you if you read the proviso of section two hundred, it hmm. says provided hmm. if the magistrate makes over the case to another magistrate, chief hmm. judicial magistrate is also a magistrate, another magistrate is also a magistrate. Hmm. Section one ninety two. After hmm. examining the complainant and the witnesses, the latter magistrate need not re-examine. Need need not. If the latter magistrate re-examines them, then. Then still, and mind you, examination of the complaint is not that, cognizant. It's not cognizance. That is not See. the act of cognizance, taking cognizance. Absolutely, sir. That I agree with you, sir. But what if the latter magistrate can examine them? He need not. He what is what the section says. Still not. So that is not. It's not. See, it's not See, Shaib, it admits absolutely of no doubt. Kindly read the opening part of section two hundred. A magistrate taking cognizance of an offence on complaint shall. See, it is before, prior to the examination. Right? Because suppose a private complaint is filed and the magistrate, he posts that particular thing for his own statement. In your opinion, is it taking cognizance or not? This was a question which was posed by His Lordship Justice Ram Kumar years back when we started this platform. Suppose it is adjourned due to paucity of time for sworn statement. See, the term cognizance, of course, there is uh, ample doubt in this particular terminology also. Because you cannot straightjacket cognizance and CRPC to some other statute as well. Now, cognizance, that has not been defined in this particular CRPC. Now, I would say that this is a particular text which has to take its color from the context. That is why in the PC Act, we have Anil Kumar versus Ayyappa. Of course, doubted in Manju Surana, but it's something other. Because the court cannot take cognizance other except without a sanction. So that means even at the time of filing a private complaint, filing a complaint, then you have to obtain the sanction and go to the court. In PC Act case, and mind you that this was decided on the basis of Parasna, which is three judgments of the Supreme Court. Anil Kumar was Ayyappa, which is still good law. Of course, it is doubted in Manju's Durana, and still we have to follow this Anil Kumar versus Ayyappa because so said the division of the Kerala High Court two then, years back. See, if Ayyappa, Anil Kumar versus Ayyappa is to be followed, what is the purpose of uh, um, sanction? Uh, which is the document to be looked into by the sanctioning authority? The investigation files. KH is only sent for investigation. Under absolutely true, sir. Abs absolutely true. But see, because this is what, uh, when a line of Supreme Court judgments come one after the other, one looking at the other, going against it, maybe hyper-technical grounds also, but still, we are all bound by the Supreme Court judgments after all, because Anil Kumar versus Ayyappa, still it's good law. Because it is grounded on Parasnath. It's a two, uh, three judgment decision of 2009. Which did not say that for forwarding a complaint under 153, there should be cognizance. Or that Absolutely. Should... Because that is why I said, sir. Because as under the PC Act, that particular term cognizance, that takes its color in a different form altogether from what you see in the CRPC. Maybe at a later point of time, the Supreme Court may come like that. I don't know, <laughs> because uh, in the absence of any specific provision to the contrary, 4.2 will operate CRPC, section 4.2. Because, absolutely Investigation, true, sir. Because, inquiry because, and trial, CRPC that, provisions will apply. Because that is where, when as, uh, as observed by uh, uh, the additional district judge, Mr. Sawman, when he was also saying, 156.3 also, even though it's at a precognizing stage, 
there are a plethora of precedents one after the other by the supreme court which would say that kindly see the magistrate is not as a, not a post office you have to apply your mind and what does cognizance mean cognizance merely means application of mind magistrate is not a post office you apply your mind send for uh, i mean uh, forward the complaint for for police investigation of course it's pre cognizance but still right from rr chari 51 supreme court 51 supreme court three judge bench three judge three judge three judge chief judge is kania two two he says forwarding the complaint under 153 is not taking cognizance and and parasnath comes much later during 2009 without taking note of rr chari that was why manju sudhana doubted anil kumar was a sayappa true sir but sir. still all the courts are following anil kumar But, but sir, uh, sir, slight correction. That is why Justice Chalmeshwar referred to a larger bench, saying 156.3 for IPC also is sanction required under PCR. Yes, it is required. But whether uh, 156.3 read with IPC, whether sanction is required or no, they have referred it to a larger bench, which is still pending. True, because that particular term has it has to be first settled. What is what exactly is cognizance? Still, despite all these judgments, still there is a Gray area. There is no definition. Say. Yeah, there is no proper definition for cognizance. That I agree, sir. Sir, now I have another issue. When you make a, a, a complaint under one fifty six three, the court sumo to converts it into two hundred, sends it on two zero two to the police. Okay. Now the contention taken by the accused is, but he has not been examined. The question is. Is examination necessary when the court itself has converted my one fifty six three into two hundred? My Priyanka Srivastava affidavit is attached to it. Yes, unless an affidavit is attached, one because you cannot have a prayer seeking one fifty six three. That was what Priyanka Srivastava. Correct, sir. But now the magistrate observed that yes, I have gone through the complaint, I have gone through the affidavit, I have gone through everything. I am now seeking a report under two zero two seeks a report. Which we file a protest petition, then he issues process. So that Now that report, pro that report is not a one seventy three two report. No, it is not two one in two not two one investigation. It is otherwise. It will not be a one seventy three two report. It won't. It yes, won't. Sir. It is a report not. only to enable the magistrate to decide whether he should there is sufficient cause for proceeding, sufficient Correct, ground sir. for proceeding further. Correct. That sir. report is only for that. I totally concede. It will not end that. in a one seventy three two report. No, sir. But now I have a problem. He then when I put up a protest petition, he issues process. Now the accused have challenged the issue process, saying that he is not he didn't examine him. The magistrate did not examine him. So how did he send it for two zero two? Why examine him? So Why? So, accused. There is no, no need. No. no. Okay, sir, I also concede. I also concede, but Honorable High Court begged to differ and use that as an excuse, and also another excuse saying that the police have exonerated the accused. So I'm granting them interim relief. I said, sir, if the police will exonerate the accused, then we don't have to come to courts anymore. So he didn't have an answer. So. Sir, every every that is why I'm saying, is it a judge-made law now that you know the police can uh, can exonerate the accused? Then we don't have to go through the trial process at all. But there are binding yes. judge-made laws. <laughs> yes. So exactly, sir. Then then by that thing, Naga uh, Nagawa and uh, Chandradev become uh, Otis, no, sir. So you, you now you are putting the horse horse before the cart if you are saying something like that. And now after I brought this up, the 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 accused have refused to go to extend the interim relief also. So the magistrate is in the contrary. I said no, sir. Rowington Nariman has justice has already issued an order that once six months are over, automatically you have to start the trial and have a trial date. Asian research was incorrect. So he. He's in a quandary. He's getting pressure on him so much. He doesn't know what to do. He's adjourning day after day. No, I think thereafter uh, there was some, some other decision which says in a criminal matters where the only in 226 this will apply and not in 482 in other cases. Mm. I think there is subsequently the Supreme Court has clarified it. The PS. But still, Asian research, I think, is a three-judgment decision. 
uh, there was mm-hmm. a clarification stated that that will not applicable to uh, 482 or other thing but only Correct, applicable sir. to that 226 clarification exactly no sir no sir a slight clarification the supreme court held that that, that is that stay order issued on a trial court proceedings will continue but a stay order issued on a high court will not continue no no high court and a 226 will not continue because yeah. there is a 226 there is a provision where if it is not extended by 6 months it is not an automatic extension correct correct sir that is that, that is, is a distinction between 226 and uh, 482 or your uh, other uh, the 4 uh, 397 etc correct sir correct sir i i i i am i am concerned but i am now flamox when the in 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 his order the honorable judge writes that they, they have been accused have been exonerated by the police I said, sir. Now, no, maybe that, as far as that particular case is concerned, probably that may be binding on the magistrate. But generally, there is a clarification. That means only we can now say. And and even otherwise, under two not two also, see the words used. That means of no doubt, or direct an investigation to be made by a police officer or by any such person as he thinks for the purpose of deciding whether or not there is sufficient ground, ground for, for proceeding. proceeding. Proceed. Only for Correct. that, it will not end in a final report. Under 170. Words are very clear. Very clear. It is not, it is not sir. I agree with you. I agree with you, sir. So that is why a protest petition was also maintainable. At that stage, how? At, at, no, no. At, at the 202 report stage, sir. 202 report. There can't be any protest petition because if the magistrate um, protest petition will arise only when. the magistrate on a police report uh, drops the proceeding refer, uh, drops accepted, the proceeding uh, accepted the refer Accept, report and drops accepting the refer report drops the proceedings drops the proceeding a, then only a, pri- a protest complaint or even the objection to the, the to the notice Ex- can exactly. be treated as a protest complaint three judge bench in bhagwan singh 85 yes, supreme court yes correct. where they said uh, notice should go to the first informant yes correct. not only by correct. the police but by the court also Yes. Right. So if I need it, so I just uh, just one. No, thing. the question will be no. The question will be suppose in a case where the FIR was not uh, filed by the victim or the injured, but somebody else. What will be the remedy available to the victim if a refer report was filed? Because he may not be knowing whether any case has been filed or not filed. Whether yes. refer report. Notice will go only to the first informant. That is what is the. No, that is a, that is a, that is a lacuna in the law. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> that that happened in the ISR espionage case also. So the so motor report by the police officer, hmm. but the victim was uh, Nambinaran or uh, the state, uh, not not even the state. The the uh, notice was given to the uh, person who sent a so motor report. <laughs> Following eighty five Supreme Court. Yes, Mr. Shoaib. Shoaib, you are about to say something. Yes, sir. Uh, if I'm permitted, sir, the reason as to why I had this query is because in West Bengal, generally throughout all the districts, what happens is the complaint is presented by the complainant to the chief judicial magistrate. Okay. The chief judicial magistrate produces the complaint. The chief judicial magistrate <coughs> passes an order that a complaint petition has been filed by X Y Z persons. I have produced the application. Cognizance is taken under Section 190. Now thereafter, the chief judicial magistrate directs the com- makes over the case to another judicial magistrate and directs the complainant to be present out there to that judicial magistrate. Thereafter, the judicial magistrate examines the complainant on oath, deposes the uh, deposition, which is generally called essay out here, and he takes the cognizance. He takes cognizance of the offences on on the basis of which the statement. That is not cognizance. That is not cognizance. If chief chief judicial magistrate has already taken cognizance. He has only simply transferred the case. That's all. This sub, uh, clearly says the the transferee magistrate need not take need, need not. not examine need not examine the witness. Not need not take cognizance. Cognizance is already taken. Already taken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you Shaheb. Uh, uh, if uh, there are any further comments from uh, anybody on this topic, uh, this is Ramushan, sir. Nice to see you back. But Ram Kumar, sir. Again, into in uh, the proviso to two hundred. Yes. The the transfer ma- the magistrate makes over the case to another magistrate under section one ninety two after examination, examining the complaint and the witnesses 
the la- the la- uh, latter magistrate need not re-examine them. Now, what okay. Shoaib was pointing out is that yes. in West Bengal, the practice is that complaints yes. are filed before the CJM. Yes. CJM directs them or makes over the case to the other magistrate without examining witnesses. Then that is the practice. Are, Shoaib, then, is it? Then the other magistrate right? will have to. Oh, Am I right? So I'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, tell you the elaborate procedure. What happens? The complainant is being examined, not on oath. If the complaint is being examined, the complainant is present. The complaint states a lot of sections, a lot of sections, suppose, sir. Now, what happens? The, the chief judicial magistrate takes cognizance of the offense under section 190 of the CRPC. Directs the how, we, how is the cognizance taken by CJ? How, how is he taking cognizance? There is a complaint, sir. Ah, is not, a complaint. Enough, not, not enough. Not necessary. Not enough. Then, no cognizance. He just finishes the complaint and he takes cognizance of the offense. So that that is, is not cognizance. That is not cognizance. He has to pro- decide to proceed under Chapter 15. Correct. Now, probably, I think that after examining the complaint, he is taking he, the complaint. He is not examining. Final. That is what Shraif says. Chief Judicial Magistrate is not examining no, the complaint. No, he, he... Complainant on oath. That is what it said. Right. Uh, not uh, examining on oath, is it not? Then, sir, his, his, his order should be... No, without uh, taking oath, how can I complain the external? Even 200 also is very clear. On oath. On oath. On, on oath. You cannot delete that particular word from Technically, the Technically, it is evidence only. Only thing is, he's taken be, behind the back of the accused. That is why the, the Har- Hardeep Singh, uh, Singh, the constitution bench said that you can't treat it as evidence unless uh, it, it can be used only for corroboration. Did not. Just hmm. like a 161 statement. Just like a 161 statement, that's all. 161, uh, not even 161. 161 no, just like, be used for corroboration. Like, only for no, contradiction. Like, contradiction. <laughs> Ram, Ram Kumar, sir, one doubt yes. for me. Yes. Sir, what is the difference between uh, cognizance, taking cognizance against an offender and taking cognizance, again, uh, taking cognizance of an offense? What the law contemplates is taking cognizance of an offender. Law offense. Co- not offender. Not offender. As not against, offender. As against um, maybe Person one before. offender or plurality of offenders. Person before, that's all now. Yes. So only yeah. against offender, not against off- offense. Only no, no. only in respect of offense, not offense, offender. Offense, offense. Offender. Okay, okay. offender was the under the old code, it was offender. Now it is taking cognizance of offense. Offense. Once cognizance is taken of the offense, any number of offenders can be added without the uh, even a committal. Okay. So, my then, doubt, uh, so one doubt for me, sir. Yes. That a complaint has been filed before yes. a magistrate. Yes. And along with that, an uh, application under Section 93 for issuing a search warrant was also filed. Yes. So, the magistrate, without taking cognizance of the, uh, uh, without examining the complaint, uh, uh, he has examined the complaint. Magistrate has examined the complaint. And he has issued a search warrant. Is it on oath? Yes, yes, yes. Sound statement was taken. Uh, and based on that sound statement, after verifying the sound statement, and he has yes. issued search warrant, but he has not taken cognizance of the How case. can you say that? How can you say that in the face of RR Jani? For uh, issuing, uh, for issuing, for ordering search, search, ordering, passing an order on the search warrant, search, search, uh, petition for search warrant. He need not examine the complainant. Correct. He can straight away order search. Why examine the complainant? So he, he, it is not required for a magistrate to examine the complainant. Not at all. Not at all. No, he, he, need only sat- he need only satisfy there was an offence was committed yes. in respect of a particular document or this thing which was required to be produced. Yes. So for that, for that satisfaction, he. It does not require to uh, that complaint. Uh, there is he no not. requirement that complaint to be examined. Not at all. <laughs> he need only peruse the petition for issuing a search warrant. And also the complaint, if any, there along with that. And RR Chari very clearly said, up- upholding the view of the Calcutta judge, that uh, uh, issuing a search warrant does not amount to cognizance. Forwarding a complaint under 123 also does not amount to cognizance. Okay. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> Sir, we have Dr. Srinivas, uh, please, Dr. Sir, sir, good evening, sir. Good evening to everyone. Sir, I am a teacher, but of course, not practicing advocate presently. Uh, sir, uh, there is a proverb that uh, the procedural laws are, of course, hand made of justice. 
Correct. Therefore, higher judiciary can make any uh, regulations or uh, laws in this regard. Therefore, your lordship might have given the judgment that even pre-cognitive stage application can be, the complaint can be rejected in spite of dismissal after uh, taking the cognizance. So my, my, my point is, sir, uh, except the point of consumption of precious time of the court, the magistrate court, there is no, no there is no impact either rejection of the plaint pre cognizance stage or dismissal of the complaint after taking the cognizance with respect to or in the context of section 300 of CRPC. See, time of the court is wasted. Okay, except that point. That is a, that is a very important point. Why the precious time of the magistrate should be wasted? He has got so many cases to be decided. There's a killing roaster before him. Why should the precious time of the uh, magistrate be wasted on a complaint which does not expressly make out any offense at all? It should be thrown away, simply thrown out at the threshold. But you can't dismiss it under 203. You can dismiss it only under 203. Okay. That's only yes. after cognizance. Yes, yes, therefore, yes. therefore, courts have coined the expression reject. You reject yes. it. On the face of it, it does not make out any offense. Reject it. Throw it at the threshold. Throw it out. So, if I may. Yes, sir. So, I am finding it quite difficult to understand. So, uh, your, you have said so that uh, when the chief, uh, chief judicial magistrate is examining the complainant, he is basically not on oath, he is basically, ah. he, he is basically <laughs> reading the complaint. Yes. And, uh, so, you are saying that uh, he is not taking cognizance of the offense. Not taking cognizance. Under so, section 200. So, so then I, I, I would like to uh, state so section 190, it says the subject to the provisions of this chapter, any magistrate of the first class and any magistrate of the second class, special empowered in this behalf under subsection 2, may take cognizance of any offence upon receiving a complaint of such facts which constitutes an offence. So even if the complainant is not examined or not, he is receiving the complaint, he is examining the complaint, and thereafter he takes cognizance of the offence under section 190. See, we have the judicial definition of taking cognizance. Not only one ruling. <clears throat> I have given a, a one dozen of rulings. Most of them by three judges. And in one case, there is a constitutional bench also. They say that once you dis, you apply the mind, magistrate applies his mind for the purpose of proceeding under Chapter 15, starting with Section 200 onwards, he can be said to have taken cognizance of the bench. How can you get over those rulings? You will have to argue before a larger bench of the Supreme Court, canvassing the correctness of all these rulings. <laughs> sir, uh, I think uh, sir, discussion sir. on a anything else? Sir, only one question is there. Yeah, very good. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, my question is to Justice Ram Kumar, sir. Okay. Very, Dedicated lectures, uh, we are benefited from Metros Bar. I uh, use the, the uh, default bail lecture and all the lectures. Sir. My question is very simple, sir. Whether the 156 3 petition may convert into 200 petitions, sir, by yes. the magistrate Sumoto. That is what, what Mr. Rao, KVJ Rao was also complaining. 153 petition was converted into 202 petitions. Sir, not. See, it can be done. technically, it According to me, there can't be a petition for referring the case under 153 alone. According to me. But that's my Normally. personal view. You, you can't file a complaint just for the purpose of forwarding it under 153. That is a uh, liberty or freedom available to the magistrate. Instead of forwarding it under 153, magistrate can take cognizance also. How Normally. can you file a petition alone for 153, forwarding it under 153? You can only forward the complaint which which alleges the commission of an offence as defined under section 2D. A complaint alone can be forwarded, not a petition to forward it under 153 CRP. I still under, I still cannot understand a petition for forwarding uh, a petition for forwarding it under 153. A complaint alone can be forwarded. Is it not? Yes, sir. It is the application, sir. It's not a petition. Basically, no, 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 no. Because there is no provision in the CRPC to file an application for forwarding. You are only filing a complaint under Section 200. Once yes. a Again, complaint is filed under Section 200, 
either the magistrate can continue with the proceedings under 202 thereafter proceed or even during the 202 proceedings also it can be forwarded to the magistrate for the police officer for the purpose of collecting data yes. even when the counsel for the even when the complainant says my complaint may be forwarded to the police is it not open to the magistrate to take cognizance instead of forwarding it under 153 no, I think that there was one decision by the Kerala High Court by Justice Pradhanam Nair said that uh, mechanically it should not be forwarded also, it appears. Correct. Yes, sir. But? Sir, a latest decision is there. We cannot insist the magistrate to forward the complaint one, under 156.3. It is the ah. purely discretion of the magistrate, whether yes. to forward it or to proceed mm -hmm. under 200. It is a Correct. settled position. Sir, that ought to be yes, so. Sir, ought to be so. Of Sir, on 5th of August, the uh, Honorable Supreme Court said that uh, under 156.3, yes, if yes. there are cognizable offenses revealed, uh, the, the may that is read into the cl clause is, is to be read as shall and not may. That is the latest judgment that has come out from the Supreme Court on 5th of August, sir. I have not seen that. I have not seen that. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I just used it in one of the cases, so I'm telling you, sir. It now supposing, they, they, see, supposing the police refuse to uh, register an FIR and yes, therefore sir. the complainant approved the magistrate, what is <laughs> the uh, earthly, earthly purpose of sending it again to the police? Exactly. That, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> you are now making the man who refused to do his job. He's sitting on judgment on his own <laughs> which He refused to take in the first instance. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I'm <laughs> Now, so, one doubt, yes. please. please. How many times cognizance and cognizance can be taken in a, on a criminal complaint? Yes, only, only once. once. Only once. Multiple times. We have Justice P.S. Narayana on his uh, evening stroll. Sir, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you see, uh, I was taking evening walk. Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, you audible, sir. Ah, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, yes very much. <laughs> okay, okay. In fact, I was taking evening walk as usual. Ah. Uh, yes. <coughs> having seen this suddenly, I think I am following. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever, uh, whatever it is, this... Uh, the, mm. This concept of taking <laughs> uh, 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 this is a controversial issue and <laughs> uh, the, the discussion uh, and the, the questions, the queries raised by um, certain of our friends, uh, it is something excellent. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Rajkumar. The judgment is XYZ versus Union of India. 5th of August uh, uh, 22. This was a sexual, sexual, sexual harassment case, and okay. uh, the police was not, uh, the magistrate so, was not. XYZ to... must be the victim. Yes. Yes, sir. Because uh, it's a sexual Rambu, sir, I didn't get the answer. Which one? I asked you one question. One. Cognizance only once. You exercise, see, magistrate exercise powers to take cognizance under which provision of uh, CRPC? Taking cognizance. Yes. If it is a private complaint under section 200, once he decides to proceed under 200, he has taken cognizance. If it is a police charge, once he receives the, the charge sheet, he takes cognizance on a police report. Is it not that only section 190 gives 190. 190. Not 190, 190 only uh, enumerate the sources upon which the magistrate may take cognizance. One is private complaint. Two is police report. But mm. actual taking cognizance on a private complaint is not a 190. Magistrate may take cognizance on a police report, no, police section. private complaint, section or on, on information from a non-police officer, or mm. on when well, the offense is committed in it's his on. very presence. No, section 190 speaks of cognizance of offenses by magistrates. Yes. Whereas section 200 doesn't say so. Examination. 200 is for private complaint only. It has no, nothing to do with police report. The, the ultimate no, 200, no, no, 200 is a procedure and 190 is the substantive no, provision. It's a substantive provision. I just clarify. Correct. 
a court takes cognizance of a matter and then alone it can proceed. Magistrate's court or any court competent to take cognizance of an offense, okay? Yes. Is competent to proceed further, okay? Take to further course of action. Yes. Unless cognizance is taken, no further steps can be taken in a prosecution, fine? Correct. The power now conferred is only in terms of section 190 CRTC. All right. Yes. We extend it to section 200. What about private complaint? No, once a complaint is filed, yes. subject to satisfaction of the magistrate, I don't want to say elaborate, see whether 200 speaks of examining witnesses or only say so, so one statement of uh, the complaint alone is sufficient. I don't want to say anything more than that because okay. already we have elaborate discussion. Section 200 speaks of the procedure we are required to follow once a private complaint is presented. Okay. Not the procedure. Magistrate may take organizations on it. On the following. Then how, how, how do you explain issuance of process in a later provision? That is 204. Not three. Chapter not four. That is chapter, that is, uh, uh, that no, is no, commencement no, no, of proceedings. No, no, sir, no, sir. I, I'm not speaking of commencement of proceedings. I am referring to just wait, sir. Yeah. Chapter 16. Chapter no. 204 is in chapter 16. No, no, commencement of proceedings. No, sir, I am still at uh, chapter number chapter 15, sir. I don't want to rush to 15, 16. Okay. Oh, okay, chapter 16. Right. You are still at chapter 15. Yes, sir. Okay. I am okay. referring to speaking of 202, which which says uh, which refers to postponement of postponement of postponement of postponement issue. of issue process. Process. Okay. Right. Okay. Then. Is it not is not that section two hundred is uh, prescribing the procedure a court expect a party expected to follow? Ultimately, the power to take cognizance must go back to section one hundred and ninety. It's not will, okay. Okay, we will confer it to section one hundred and ninety. Okay. No, because right. section 90, 190 specifically speaks of the power given to any court to take cognizance. I don't Correct. say any court, it's magistrate's court, magistrate or CJ. Because once I say any court, probably it may lead to some sort of uh, unnecessary discussion. Section 200 doesn't prescribe any procedure relating to taking cognizance. No, I don't say procedure. It doesn't empower the court to take cognizance. Mr. Shoaib has got that, that seems, seems to be under confusion about this aspect. That's why I asked my first question is, how, how many times the court can take cognizance in a matter? Only once, only once. once. Yes, Mr. Shwaib, now it's cl clear to you that cognizance can be taken oh. only once. But but in the case of an offence tribal by a court of session, Supreme Court has said that twice it can be taken. One by the magistrate, another by the session judge. No, I sir. My own, I have my own, my own. The purpose of committal, no. Sessions court has no power to take. For the purpose of committal, he is taking. Why do you say that? Session court has got the power to take. Let us go. go back to CRP itself. So 195 says it can be only on basis of the committal, it can take cognizance or not otherwise. That's all. Exactly. So that is taking cognizance on a committal. No, it is not. It is not, it is not cognizance in terms of section 190 CRPC. 192, sir. Cognizance is confined only to section 190. I think we can't extend it beyond that. It's all in that same chapter. 192 CRPC session states. Chapter 14. Take it. Power to take cognizance without committal. 192. Yes. That is 193, I think. 192. Conditions requisite for initiation of proceedings. Stands in a different proceedings. Except as otherwise expressly provided by this court yes. or by any other law for the time being in force. Which is no that, court which of is session. For, which is that, for, example, for example, defamation against a Constitutional functionary. Correct. No committal necessary. Section 193 also says the same. The PCI. Court must be, must be specific, it must be competent to take cognizance in specified offenses. Then alone it can take cognizance. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. Not a lot of us. Necessarily in any matter in criminal prosecution, the, the, the first step is to approach the court of law and magistrate or CJM as the case may be. In some states it's CJM and some states it's only magistrates. Masters of uh, judicial masters of first class. Okay, sir. In NDPS cases, no. There may be cases where special courts are constituted. 
That's it. That's it. PC Act. PC Act. PC Act. There is no necessity for a commission. No, no, no. I don't want to go back to the CST. You see, there's all those uh, cases where special courts are created and they, are, they have the sessions powers. They are designated sessions courts. Special courts which are designated for specific purposes. Both, both magistrate as well as sessions power sometimes. Yes. Both yes. will be there. No, no. I am just speaking of the powers of a magistrate in terms of section 190 CRPC. Hmm. Can, Sir, that, is reason, no, that is the reason as I said, section 190 is a substantive provision based on which a magistrate can take cognizance. Yes. Because yes. there, there are three, three, three sources mentioned. No, let, let us, let us confine uh, three, three, uh, no, three sources mentioned. One is uh, on a police complaint, a police report, or by a complaint hmm. as defined under section 2D, or any information received. A of a non-police non officer or any other so any other information own knowledge own knowledge of the magistrate own knowledge one, own knowledge. one, one, one clarification sir Ramkrishna so sir. so simply because uh, somebody was talking about something court, court cannot take something must be there before the court no, no. thereafter yes. the procedure is provided as to whether it will be proceed how it will have to be proceeded or to proceed no i agree so with complaint you is, complaint is one because as as rightly you said cognizance on three aspects can be possible. A power has been given by the, to the magistrate under 190. No, no. You, is it that the complaint referred to in section 191A is a different complaint than what is completed, contemplated under section 200? No, sir. So what is the complaint? 2D. 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 2D defines the complaint. That's all. Correct. Suppose a gentleman walks into a magistrate court and makes a oral statement. It is suffice. It no, is wait. complaint. No, no, let me let me complete. Let me, because many youngsters are here. We oldies, of course, we had dealt with all these matters long ago. Okay. See, a gentleman walks into court, makes a oral complaint, and this complaint contains required material to attract a cognizable offense. Very, very cautiously using this word cognizable offense. Then what is the course left to the magistrate? Can you just ask him to give it in something in writing? Or he wants him to present a separate thing. Can he direct him to present a written complaint? Or is it is he duty bound to record this statement? And then, if satisfied, take your cognizance. Then proceed with the issuance of process. Okay. The cognizance is with reference to always, always with reference to an offense only, not against the accused. Many times, many magistrates are committing this mistake. They say cognizance is taken against the accused so and so for offenses so and so so and so. They are not supposed to pass such an order. That is under the old code. What the old code or new code, sir? Now, now the present situation is they are supposed to take the cognizance of an offense only, offense or offenses only. Law is allowed. The magistrate can straight away examine him or not. No, or or a complaint is given. No, these are all procedural requirements. Unless magistrate thinks it fit to refer the matter under section 156.3. Okay. Now the requirement as per Supreme Court is uh, an affidavit should be enclosed to 156.3. But as rightly said, always a complaint is presented in terms of section 200 CRPC. It will not be filed in, in terms of section 156.3 or a specific request will ordinarily be made by any, any seasoned lawyer requiring the court to refer the matter in terms of section 156.3 CRPC. There are requests. Of course. These are all, these are all the, the cultivated habits, sir. That's, one, that's what I intend to say. These are all cultivated habits, sir. Some, some staff, staff member, ministerial staff will ask the advocate, poor advocate or advocate to include this particular sentence. But it, sir, this is all certain and see undesirable practices that have see that have see that, that are going on. That's what I don't I don't like I don't like to comment more on this. Some undesirable practices are going on. Good old practices are see have, have lost their relevance. In earlier days, people never used to say that matter should be necessarily referred under 1563 CRP. There are instances where Unfortunately, advocates are requesting the court to forward the complaint under section 1563. Or sometimes applications say the complaints are filed as if they are under 1563. That's unfortunate practice.
the test uh, that is going on. But ultimately, all said and done, the source of power to the court to take cognizance is confined only to Section 190 CRPC. All right, all right. All right. Absolutely true. Okay. Absolutely Agreed. true. Agree. No, no, that's that's exactly no. If Shoaib has got any doubt, Mr. Shoaib. Yes, sir, still there. Think in terms, think, think, think in terms of section 9, 190 alone. What, what difficulty seem to be, say, Chief Minister Magistrate, is, is passing an order of taking cognizance. Under section 191, specifically. Whatever it be, see, cognizance is taken in terms of section 190 CRPC. 190. Matter is uh, see, made over to the magistrate, isn't so? The magistrate is now again taking cognizance after recording statement. No, sir. The magistrate is now examining the complainant on oath, introducing his statement in the form of writing, and thereafter is taking cognizance of the offenses that have been. It is the it is very 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 that stage is something like an overreach. No, he is not expected to do it at all. When I go to the extent of saying that it's an illegality, it's an illegality. One may go to the extent of saying that it's an illegality. Once cognizance is already taken, and CJM all said and is your superior of magistrate superior. Sir, sir, if I if I'm allowed, sir, I'll just I'll just give a recent example. But he did not record this own statement, is it not? CJM. Ah, he did yes. not record. He did not record according to how he did not record any small statement. Sir, sir I'll, I'll just give one sir, example which I faced recently, sir. Yes. They gave us specific facts. Yes, sir. Specific I, instance. I, 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 yes. I faced it recently, sir. I had, I had, uh, I'm a for the accused person, sir. Now the complainant, she's a lady. She had filed this application under section 200 before the chief judicial magistrate. The chief judicial magistrate looked into the complaint, took cognizance of the offense under section 190, and thereafter transferred it to the magistrate of the first class. Was it a written complaint or oral complaint? Written, written complaint. All right. The written complaint, the written complaint, the allegations of the sections that were leveled was 498A, uh, 406, 323, 506, and 34. In this written complaint, the chief judicial magistrate took cognizance of the offense under section 1. No, did he, did he record the sworn statement of the complaint? No, no, no. no. And he just orally he just examined the complaint itself. The complaint itself. He examined did the complaint. He, did he no. administer oath? No, 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 no. He did not examine complainant. He did not just record sworn statement. No, he just read the complaint. Yes, he had read the complaint. Yes. Then the procedure followed by CJM itself is illegal. It's an illegality. No, sir, I just complete, sir. I just complete, sir. Or, or the, the basis should have been in terms of what Ramkrishnan sir said, 129, 120, 191A. Okay. Basing on the complaint. I, even, even, even in those circumstances, probably one should fall back upon section 200 CRPC. Uh, uh, so if I am allowed to, sir, just complete, sir. Uh, so that I can just put it in a better fashion, sir. No, no, one, one thing, please clarify one thing, Mr. Sai. Did he, did he record that the fact that he has taken cognizance? Yes, sir. Exactly. Cognizance for the offenses? Yes, sir. No, he just, he just recorded that a, a complaint under section, a complaint has been filed by XYZ, read the complaint, produced the complaint, has taken cognizance of the offense under section 191A, CRPC. How do you know hmm. that? He sir, said so. He sir, said so in open court. Sir, the order sheet reflects that it's a written order, sir. Without examining the complainant? Yes, sir. It's a written order. No. Did he examine the complainant? No, sir, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. Did not. Sir, sir, did not. Sir, sir, you please, please clarify whether you are appearing for the accused or you are for the complainant? Accused. 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 Better you better question it by means of revision or file 482. I, I, I did, sir. I, I, I did yes. that. Thing, Congratulations. You are going to succeed in the matter. No, if if the chief judicial minister did, did not examine him a judge. on oath, there judge is no cognition taken. Sir, sir, yes, Rampo, sir, one thing, one thing, please. Yes. Mr. Shayab, sir. If the matter comes before a judge like Justice Ramkumar Garu, you very lucky. <laughs> the, 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 the state fiction is this. Now, after the complaint was made over to the magistrate, the magistrate examined the complaint, examined the complainant on oath, and thereafter diluted section 323, diluted section 506, just written section 498 and 406, 34. And thereafter followed the procedure under section 204. So what is the authority to do all these things? I don't understand really. I'm not able to understand, comprehend, first of all. Going by your facts, it, the, what the CJM did was only transfer the case to the Making magistrate. over. Making exactly, over. Exactly. 
and but, the magistrate recorded this whole yeah, thing. Unfortunately, is, what he says is there is an order by CJM saying that he has taken cognizance. How does it become cognizance? When merely because he orders. So merely because he read the complaint, he is saying that I have taken cognizance. He did not record this own statement. No, whatever that, that's the illegality involved. How, how can you call it a cognizance? Ah, that's I don't understand. No, no. He says that cognizance is taken in terms of section 101, uh, 191A. That's yeah. what he so is it enough the for the magistrate to say, I have taken cognizance, I have written in the proceeding my, paper, take cognizance and take it. See, my, my, my interest is to see that Shaya moves to a high court yes. or goes, goes into court. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, I think, I think you, you are bound to succeed, Shaya, don't worry. Sir, may I? Or, or if, if, judge, if the judge is careful enough, probably he will remand the matter to the court proper, to the appropriate court. To take confidence following appropriate procedure. So, so strangely enough, the magistrate did not follow the procedure under section 202 also. The accused persons were from Bihar. They had come all Sir. the way from Bihar just to uh, after this you, 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 you did not you did not ask for stay of all further proceedings. Yes, sir, I have asked for stay. Now the uh, curious part is that the sessions court did not uh, give me a stay. The only reason being one of the accused persons voluntarily appeared before the court. Sir. Just to obtain the certified copies so that a uh, stay can be, I mean, I can follow the revision procedure. And that's the reason the, uh, the sessions are not give me a stay. Yeah, how, many, how many accused are there in the matter? Four, sir. Father in law, huh? mother in law, brother in law. Right, now, now, one accused has appeared, uh, see, approach sessions court, isn't so? One, uh, one uh, accused has approached sessions court, the three other accused has approached Okay, okay. The, you better see that 480 application is filed before high court by another accused. Yes, sir. I think that's Mr. true. Mr. Shyam, shall I? Yes. Uh, shall I add something? Yes. yes please, please, so uh, <clears throat> on the on the uh, complaint of Mr. Shoaib, uh, uh, what I understand is that uh, the CJM has, uh, of course, he has recorded that cognizance taken, and uh, it was forwarded to the uh, magistrate, judicial first class magistrate. So the magistrate has to start from section two hundred, section two hundred, then section two hundred and two inquiry. Thereafter, the magistrate has to take a decision. Either to proceed under 203 or pass an order under 203 dismissing the complaint or uh, issuing process under 204. Yes. So the magistrate, the, yes, that Mr. power was Mr. not. So, uh, Mr. Soman, that, uh, Mr. Soman, please yes. bear with me. That's why I asked for my first, first three question was how many times the court can take cognizance? Yeah. No, cognizance, of course. This, this cognizance, is cog question. there is. The whole purpose of asking sir, this sir, question my, is. Question is. Yes, I thought I, I, I was. I, I, that no, no, I, I'm, I'm only saying that no, I'm only no. saying that taking cognizance will not bar the magistrate from exercising no, his no, power Mr. under Mr. 203 Soman, or 204. Mr. Yeah. Soman, CJM would not have passed an order without understanding what exactly cognizance means. Exactly, <laughs> that's the point. That's cognizance? The point. No, if the, if the CJ, what, is, what is the nature of a judicial act? No, if the magistrate, what I'm saying, so trying to, what I, in, when, when no, trying to, no. What the I am trying to that order, see, the act is done. What I am trying to canvas is that the CJM has taken cognizance, of course. Then, then transferred the case to uh, judicial first class magistrate to proceed it's further. Begging question is that is, how many times ah, court CJ, take cognizance? Only once. That is not the question here. Yeah. Everyone is CJM, saying that only the, once no, to, 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 so to Section two hundred was not passed by competent court. Yes, competent court has only competent court, CJM has only uh, passed an order that he has taken cognizance, but the what? CJM has not. No, this sir, is CJ, this, what do you mean? Is it not in terms of 190 CRPC? And he, what CJ, is, he has taken cognizance yes. in terms of section 191A. Sir, even even the if the complaint is filed before the judicial first class magistrate himself, still he if he is posting the case for. Uh, that also taking cognizance. Absolutely. That also taking cognizance. That power was not uh, that power was exercised by CJM. That's all. CJM. Ah, but the, but the, rest of, the, th the but thing the, is that uh, what, what Mr. Soman is trying to uh, convey is that kindly see section 192. 192 itself begins with the word any CJM may after taking cognizance. See. So, for taking cognizance is a condition precedent. Now, come to section 200, proviso to section 200. Proviso to section 200 clearly says, provided that if the magistrate makes over the case to another magistrate under section 192, that is after taking cognizance, after examining the complainant and the witnesses, the 
lateral magistrate need not re-examine them. The word used is re-examine. So suppose the CJM did not examine. CJM did not examine. Then, because suppose a magistrate who receives a complaint, post the case, post own statement, I am going to proceed under, I'm in the chapter 15, then that is taking cognizance. That is taking cognizance. No. No, kindly see, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then that is, that has to, because kindly see, sir, right from RR Chari, 51 Supreme Court, three judge bench. You have Narayan Das, Bhagavan Das, 59. Mo, I think Ram Kumar, sir, you were referring to Mo, Mo versus no. sir. Constitution bench. Five judges, 71, three SEC, 936. You had that uh, Nirmal Jit Singh, who? 73 Supreme Court, 3629. Mm -hmm. They were referring to Lakshmi Narayan Reddy, of course. That was the, there was a slight disagreement by Justice Nariman in the 2019 decision, but not with regard to Tara 14 of Devarapaldi, with yes. regard to some other facet. Except, except uh, uh, in a case covered by the proviso to Section 200, a magistrate can take cognizance only after examining the complaint. Absolutely true. Absolutely no issue at all on that. Then how did the Chief Judicial Magistrate take cognizance without examining him? That, because proviso itself is very proviso itself is very clear under section 192 after examining the complainant and the witnesses so that proviso clarifies that taking cognizance may, in that particular thing it can be done only after examination suppose he doesn't go on with the such exercise it is illegality there is, there is no cognizance absolute illegality there is no cognizance there is no cognizance. And without cognizance, he cannot resort to 192. So, so Mr. Shaya, probably you have to try your luck elsewhere. <laughs> and and one more one more thing, Ramana sir. Because when we were about that um, prior in the complaint, so kindly see, CRP section 2D defines what a complaint is. Now there is no specific form which is prescribed for a complaint. The only thing is there must be an allegation which prima facie discloses commission of the offense with necessary facts for the magistrate to take action. Now, there is a Supreme Court judgment right during 1970, Bhimapa versus Lakshman, AR 1970 why, Supreme Court. That's why, Mr. Prem, I refer to one instance where a person yes. was to and, and kindly see, sir, there was a case before the Supreme Court during uh, 2001 where the prayer was one for police investigation under section 156.3. And the Supreme Court went on to say that still, despite that prayer, of course, we had a division with decision in Kerala saying that no, but still, the Supreme, this is a Supreme Court judgment of 2001, which said, even if the prayer is for a investigation under 156.3, just treat it as a complaint. It is Joseph Mathuri versus uh, Swami Sachidanand. 2001, I don't remember the citation. I would uh, take it out for you. Not necessarily. Uh, Joseph uh, Mathuri's uh, case. And then Mr. Prem, I think has presented in terms of section 200 CRPC. Okay. Yes. See, basing on such complaint, it is open for the magistrate if it thinks fit to forward it in terms of section 156.3. Absolutely true, sir, because what, even the ruling which I cited is 2001 uh, and subsequently in 2015 in Priyanka Srivastava, invocation but, of the power. No, no, Mr. It was, let us not confuse yes. ourselves with this <laughs> case law. See, one, one yes. judgment says, see, see my, yes, my impression is this about the case law. A small change in fact will change entire confidence. Entire things, absolutely true. Absolutely true. That's why, that's why, don't mistake me, I don't attach much attachments, much importance to the case law. Unless, unless, unless a specific uh, see, direction is given or law is laid on specifically. That's Absolutely true, sir. In old judgments, in, in earlier judgments, we used to find, this is the statement of law by the bench of so-and-so court. They never used to say that this is the law laid down. They used to say this is statement of law. The statement of law. No, um, Justice Ramana, what do you say about Shoaib's complaint? What is your view? My view is the very the very order passed by CJM is illegal. Illegal. Why? Why? It's not in accordance with is not in accordance with provisions of CRPC. Illegal Fine. for what reason? For the very simple reason is he did not even record his own statement or statement 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 on oath of yes complaint. Yes. 
Yes. And probably he passed and see, I, I can I can probably I can use this word is a very, very negligent and careless act on the part of CJM in passing yes. such order. Yes. What what prevents the CJM from forwarding the complaint to a magistrate, making over a complaint sir, to a magistrate is, sir, without Ram taking Kumar, cognizance? Sir, Ramkumar, sir. No, sir. Yes. Ram Kumar, sir. Yeah. Please, please see section 192. No, no. Please. Please see that section. Mr. Prem. Mr. Prem. Yes, sir. All said and done. Let us not add to the confusion of Mr. Shoyev. <laughs> no, sir. I was, I was just telling uh, no, Justice Jamkumar. Uh, see, as I go yes, I get out from his stance, he has got a lot of things going on in his head. Ramkumar, sir. Huh? Yes. 192, 192 starts with the words. Any yes. CJ. Mr. Mr. Shoyev. Uh, that's all. I think there After are. After taking man. cognizance of the offense. I don't, I don't then, then he can make over. CGM's order. It's an illegality. May, may, not try. Next, next, ah, next. May, 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 is, may is for what? May is for making over. over. May is not for taking cognizance. Hmm. The CJM may, after hmm. taking cognizance of the offense, make over the case. It should be read in such a manner. Then 200. Is, oh, and then 200. Then 200 says, provided further, that the magistrate makes over the case to another magistrate under 192 after examining the complainant and the witnesses. But, but Mr. Premraj, on the administrative side, CJM can make over a complaint to the that is another thing. having that, jurisdiction. That is another thing to say, yeah, administrative side. Totally different, on the administrative totally different. side, CJM has got the power totally to make over, absolutely the, true. make over the complaint to the magistrate having jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. That is another, another aspect. There, it is not taking cognizance. It's not, not taking cognizance. In such a case, if, if, the, if the CJM, which is Shwaib is referring to, he has only made over the complaint to a magistrate, Without taking cognizance, that magistrate will have to take cognizance by no, sir, examining because, him on oath. Sir, Shoaib was having an argument that yes. it was under section 192. That is why yes. I said it is 192. In, in the other case, of course, the CJM is free. Yes. Because suppose a complaint is filed before a CJM. CJM, yes. of course, even without looking at the complaint, he can make over the keys. Yes. That is another yes. thing, which we, it's not governed by the CRPC. What's going to happen in your, suppose you move high court? Suppose matter comes before a bold judge. I'm very sorry. I, I know I'm a retired judge. I can use all this, uh, see this, this type of language. Okay. Uh -huh. And so I got, I, I got myself enrolled once again. Of course, I am not wearing robes for various reasons. I don't want to come in the way of youngsters. Okay. Setting up the, the continuing their practice. I don't want to be a competitor for them. <laughs> That's one reason why I'm not attending courts. Okay. See, one thing, suppose the matter comes before a bold judge, you will be very lucky. The, I think all entire proceedings will be quashed. Suppose the matter comes before a judge who is a bit conservative, matter would be remanded. Anyway, you are going to have some result. A remand will be a difficult affair for you. Anyway, very difficult to see, make your clients understand no, what will be remanded. And uh, the court will try to correct the situation and probably direct CJM to. Go ahead with the matter once again. But so, Mr. Shoy, is it a practice that all complaints are filed before the CJM? Yes, sir. All complaints. Is it? Is it in Kerala? No, no, no. no. Not in Kerala. West Bengal. West so Bengal. that is, he oh. is making it over to a magistrate on the administrative side. It's in West Bengal, fine. It is, it is a, uh, if all complaints are filed before CJM, hmm. then it is he is doing it on the administrative side, making over the complaint to the magistrate. Uh, yes, for sir. that, I don't think he'll have to sit in the dais and then pass an order. He will do it in the office. Absolutely, he, absolutely. He need not record the zone statement also. Yes. Sir. He's not but taking cognizance. But sir, in Shoaib's case, he's examining the complainant, not on oath. That's not on oath. Case. So that, that is maybe for his so, personal sir, satisfaction. Sir, sir, hmm. he's, he's not examining the he's, he's just examining the complainant without oath. He's reading the complaint. He's okay. Reading the petition itself. Yes. Maybe for, like Ramkumar sir uh, said, for his, uh, what do you call, satisfaction. Personal satisfaction. Now see, in uh, care, uh, otherwise, uh, see, see the practice. He says all complaints are filed only before the CJM. CJM or additional judicial magistrate. And in metropolitan areas, it is chief metropolitan magistrate or the additional chief metropolitan magistrate. No, complaints are filed before which court? All complaints. Either CJM or CMM. CMM only. Yes, sir. No, Not judicial first class magistrate. Judicial ministers versus having jurisdiction in the area, no complaints are filed. 
no no sir ah uh, that no, makes the care. difference mm. that makes all the difference because the fisher is the head of the, uh, the chief judiciary all right those that there might be a, 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 Of, of orders on the administrative side. What about charge sheets? They are being filed only in CMM court or CJM no, court. No, no, CJM. <coughs> Unless, sir, CJM. Sir, I think there is one provision is there. Even if the complaint is filed before the CJM, suppose the complaint, the CJM feels that he he need not entertain because he can go to the jurisdiction by side. Can it not simply forward the complaint to the uh, uh, even in the judicial side? I think that there is, is one two, provision. That is that. Two not one. Two not one. Ah, he can do it. He probably can do it. Two not one. He can do it. No problem. Uh, two, two not one stands on an entirely different footing. Two, two, two not one. Two not one is exceeding jurisdiction. I mean, it is. Yes. Out of the offense, uh, he shall forward it to the. Who is not competent to take off license of the case? That's only, only, only provision we to see. The magistrate who is not competent to take off license of the offense shall. If the complaint is in writing, return the complaint for presentation to the proper court. That's yes. the only provision which we have. No only other provision. Return. It can be returned. It can only be returned. No, the complaint to be presented before the proper court, not by transfer. Now, what is what is what is meant by competence? Is it an account of jurisdiction or account or empowerment? Jurisdiction that is territorial jurisdiction or an account of empowerment? Competence covers entire thing. Either it can be jurisdiction. It can be well, well within the powers. It's a uh, word which uh, admits of a huge broad spectrum. Probably, probably in West Bengal, the institutional courts must be CJM courts or CMM courts. Yes, in which case CJM is passing orders under Section Fifteen Two, CRPC Fifteen Two. Hmm. It is an administrative side. He is making over the complaints to the concerned magistrate, and magistrate taking cognizance. After examining the complaint, in this case, the CJM has already written that he has taken cognizance. That is that is wrong. That is legal. That is wrong because if it is under fifteen two, it is for distribution of the work. That is that another is, thing to say. Yes. And there should be some rules also yes. for taking that. There must be that. rules. There must be rules. Otherwise, and, how can you that, say that all complaints should be filed before CJM? And in that case, he is enforcing only the administrative power. Exactly. Exactly. Ram Kumar sir, the one more point I want to uh, get yes. a clarification. The issue being faced that yes. is uh, after taking cognizance and uh, yes. before uh, uh, issuing process under two hundred four CRPC, yes. can the accused enter appearance and argue his case at the stage no. of two hundred two? No, 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 no. Only no. only in one case the Supreme Court said yes, sir Max, <laughs> because that was a case where uh, several litigations were pending. Sir Max was with Johnny. Shashi Jena versus Kadal Swain. Hmm. My accused has no no business. Even if he Ab happens absolutely. to be in court, even if he happens to be, he in can court, watch. He can, he can watch, the watch the proceedings. Proceeding, but there's no whether, right. Whether no have, business. I don't know. Sir Max was a jolly person. So I have appeared in the magistrate court. <laughs> I don't know whether Mr. Shah have appeared in the magistrate <laughs> court before uh, to not for. <laughs> so I have to appear for the husband so that I can take out the certified copies. <laughs> No, no, did you appear before the CJM court? No, I did not appear before the CJM court. I had to appear before the transferee court. Transferee court. Before after after before process. Two hundred four. After sir. process. Uh, the, 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 the court passed an order under section two hundred four, but I was yet to receive the summons. The wife informed the husband that you are in deep suit because I have instituted case law under section four hundred ninety against you. But anyway, Mr. Shahib, to share with you, there are excellent judges on criminal side in Calcutta High Court. <coughs> As one gentleman was sitting in Andhra Pradesh High Court, very senior gentleman and uh, excellent hand in criminal work. Hey, pa, the route is clear. You know the destination. No, anyhow, no, any, no, any, no, any, no, anyhow, better we need not pass any comment on the pending cases. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And uh, you will say that this no, is Ram Kumar no, advised no, me. Ram Kumar has said in the webinar. Ah, uh, <laughs> this is Ram Kumar advised me to do this. So I am doing. Ah, Ramana. Ah, Ramana. Ah, Ramana. I wanted to see advice, Mr. Soman, on this aspect. Uh, we would sir, have sir. A, a more interaction had Nagamuthu sir joined. Oh. Peter, <laughs> Nagamuthu sir, welcome. Now he has got a bright future. Any, please don't discuss any pending matter before you in a public forum like this.
And normally, normally that is advice we use to give seven. No, no advice on probably, probably ending matters. Out of his anxiety, he is. Uh, no, coming. probably they may be putting in an hypothetical questions. No, then no. we have no. We can answer that. That is a different thing. No, sir, <laughs> sir, you know and I know very well how we see. We all suffered like this for several years. No, that was no. That was the reason why when no, people sir, are. Sir. No, people were so okay. emotional when saying no, about I, I, the I, I, No, no, I completed almost 35 years in this branch. My prime life was spent only for sake of this institution. Hmm? Nagamutu sir is silently watching. Uh, we have Nagamutu sir. I mean, <laughs> 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 sorry. sorry, sorry, I was a little busy today. Therefore, uh, I am very sorry. Hmm. Probably Justice Nagmuthi is the best person to speak of uh, Mr. Shohib's problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I think that uh, this is over. Yes, sir. Uh, Discussion is going on. Yes, sir. Please, please go ahead. Please. Sir, would you like to make some comments on the topic now that you know the topic? No, 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 no. Please, please. It may not be proper for me without knowing what had happened. <laughs> So I will I'll have the benefit of watching you now. Please go. Thank you, thank you, sir. So I um, mean, uh, uh, we are already uh, seven twenty on eighteen. Yeah. So uh, if uh, uh, Prem, anything to be added? Nothing. I would only say because in Choyab's case, if at all there was no interdict by means of Adalat Prasad, that same court could have rectified everything. No power of review. No inherent power also. Yes, but, but, but sir, there, again, that is also highly debatable. Adalat Prasad, of course, Adalat Prasad held that it would amount to a review. But what was the case of Adalat Prasad? It was not a summons case, number one. It was a summons case. No, no, no. For each charge, a summons case. No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not Adalat Prasad. K. Matthew. K. Matthew. K. K. Matthew. Adalat Prasad, Adalat Prasad, kindly see, sir. Adalat yes, Prasad. You are right. You are said, right. It was not. And kindly see, sir, Justice Hegde, he left open the finding in Matthew that the order issuing process amounts to an interim order. Right. That order issuing process is an interim order. What was said in Matthew in paragraph 17 of Adalat Prasad, yes. Justice Hegde leaves open that particular thing. And Adalat Prasad was a case where it was a warrant case. It was not a summons case. Subsequently, another three judges which Supermanam Sethi Raman, Raman. Raman, Raman 2004-13 SCC. Again, the same three judges which the only difference is that instead of uh, Justice Mathur, it was Justice Tarun Chatterjee. Yes. Other two judges remained the same and the judgment passed by Justice Sandosh Ekde. Yes. Again, this contention was taken. Kindly see that uh, this is not and kindly see, sir, what is the prohibition under section 362? What is the prohibition under section 362? 362 prohibits only under two particular circumstances. One, if it's a final order, when K.M. Matthew says it is an interim order and Adharat Prasad says we are leaving open that particular question, then how can you say it is a review? It cannot be. Adharat Prasad, of course, of course, we have a, we can have a, it is highly debatable. And kindly sir, now Justice Nagabutu also can come in because Justice Naga, in I think it is in Justice Nagabutu's case. Now the Supreme Court has constituted a larger bench. Whether a person who is uh, arrayed as an accused and under 319 can move for a discharge, almost akin provision. No, they have left it open. They will dispose of the matter. Again, they will let the question open. And they oh. say that it can be considered in an appropriate yes. case. Yes, yes, yes. I will, I will share the order. I will share the order to you. Oh. Yes, you need to be back there. In that case, they actually went to the hospital about Tani's work and made some submission. Therefore, they said, because see, the one more thing in the judgment is that uh, Jesse Bob, they say, whenever an accused is sought to be implemented as an accused under Section 319, he should go to him first. He should be heard. And thereafter, they are not. 319. If already heard 319, there is no need to give him eternal opportunity under 227. That is what this is what they say, which I question. So, in some of the ICI projects, very many high courts say, including Karnataka High Court, there is no privilege to be accused 
under section 319 they could be is not a flaw some high court take the view that by following the principle of natural justice no uh, not only that sir sir the normal sir given. suppose under yes. 319 319 a person accused is added uh. the only right available is there is no further charges being claimed is it no i don't think so you can only recall the witnesses examine and then proceed no, with the judgment no, 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 there is no going to no recall in is there any no, further no, frame no, framing no, charges no, evidence recorded in his absence earlier is no evidence it's not evidence correct evidence is to be recorded absence so violation of 273 michael yeah. mccado correct evidence is to be recorded so what i uh-huh. said was that the standard of uh, maybe at the time of 319 and 227 were different 319 no question of discharge etc arises only at the time when there is a framing of charges arises yes yeah. here in 319 I, said, i think there is no further framing of charges arises yes I said charge frame, frame not one against him. Charge frame taken to the already already arrayed accused. Yes, no? yes. So I said three nineteen can be equated almost to one ninety. Because at that time we can notice that one ninety is no accused is not heard. So at that time also court looks for prima facie case. If one prima facie case is found, then the second summons goes to the accused. On the appearance of that, under two not seven, copies are punished. Here also, after the accused is summoned under three nineteen, copies are to be punished. So here after only you will be in a better position to argue his case that there is no material available under court to frame charges. So simply because the three nineteen has been added at that time, I show that he appeared on his own. On no, it can be arrayed only on evidence, is it not? Yes, on evidence, evidence. only on evidence. evidence. So he will have to be furnished the evidence. Yes. Not they any other both, copy. Only evidence. Both are, both are totally different. Uh, Ranjit Kumar, <clears throat> he said, no, no, no. This three uh, nineteen should be read into two twenty seven, and therefore there is no need. I said I point blank. I said no. I completely disagree with you, and I know the ground reality is how this is the going to. Uh, caused a uh, lot of problem for the accused. I told him I, I still the end. I did not agree with him. Because, uh, you know, we are not saying that you are wrong. No, I don't. He is wrong. I said that. Then what I did? You no, know, we are not going to the question at all. We are leaving it open. I invited them. Please answer these two questions: whether accused is entitled for notice under three nineteen, and secondly, whether petition under two twenty eight can be filed or not. Please answer these two things. They said in this matter we are not going to that. We <laughs> uh, we wait for an appropriate wait for an appropriate Shell. case to answer. Shell. Shell. Same same language was used. I said this is the appropriate time. This is the appropriate <laughs> case. Please tell me this. I did not agree. Uh, so they said that uh, we we do not want to have academic exercise. No, whether no, by no, no. I I want to know whether by that time whether the trial has started and reached some particular stage. I in that case for your no for we thought say for this for some that may be the reason why you can challenge it even at the time of a final order probably that would have been the reason how many how many <laughs> whether the, the accused should uh, uh, have where with all to challenge at every stage uh, there are lot of problems and we should also have good judges to appreciate so where is the guarantee no, no, that was you know that was reason i wanted to know What was the stage at the time when the case was taken before the Supreme Court, no, the no, trial no, court? Very, very, no, no, very shortly, very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost in the very end of the trial, mm-hmm. you would have participated in the trial, cross-examined the witnesses. Mm-hmm. All yes, things sir. would have been over. Prem, you could have, you would have seen another matter there. Matter is my refer to a larger bench in which also I appear. That is whether uh, a prosecution by the police under four twenty. Enable after there is a case under one thirty eight in progress. Ah, uh, that is ah, yeah. Yeah. both both yes. on the same case, same set of facts. Two offenses can be possible or not? That Just... may be different. Ingredients are different. Just Correct. Just like Chauhan says, no, there it can be. Um, uh, Justice Kaju has written just to four line order. All right, facts are same. We accept, accept. He said he quashed. Matter is, we refer to the other bench now. Prem, did you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes I sir. I saw in the newspaper. Newspaper, I saw. Yes, I saw it on the judgment. Yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> uh, times uh, also it becomes very interesting in the Supreme Court. And many a times you lose. Yeah, not Supreme Court here. <laughs> okay, good sir, good good experience today. So next time and uh, I, I will join on time, and uh, you will also have the benefit of hearing the full uh, debate. <laughs> It is always so next, next week. Then uh, let us have Justice Nagamutu yes. to deliver a talk on any subject of his choice. My, so my, you can... my, my choice is zero choice always. <laughs> then we will choose a topic for you. No, no, I, will, I, will, I will join you, but uh, I'll give you a time when I'm uh, today. Also, I'm in Delhi today. I, yeah. I should find you on time, but because I am very purposefully, I am with Jay here. Uh, for my Monday. <laughs> or else next 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 week, let us have Justice Ramana. It will be you please excuse sir, me a topic a topic of your choice, sir. No, no, please excuse me for some time. For two weeks more or three weeks more. Okay. Uh, I'm, that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the kind of discussions and deliberations, and I remember the words used uh, today morning when we talked to Justice Ramkumar, sir. It will be a short one. We, I'll talk only for 20 minutes and we'll wind up within 45 minutes. 5.30 we started, we are at 7.30. So see, yeah. the subject, the topic, the discussion, the deliberation decides the time. We cannot no, decrease. The whole difficulty is the same subject has been deliberated several times. But the, well, the same but, confusion... But again, the different, no, different same, nuances... Same, the same, different con, no, same, con, same confusion still prevails. That is the whole difficulty with the word cognizance. Mr. Mr. <laughs> in your group, uh, Mr. Gowda, my friend, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Today he has posted a judgment regarding the limitation, limitation aspect. Completely wrong judgment. Absolutely true. The and, and and for that matter, Rupaksha <laughs> Gowda sir was here. I think he yeah. left only 15 minutes ago. I mean, towards the fact that he was here throughout the today's meeting. Now I thought of calling him this morning on scene. I, I was not aware of the judgment. <laughs> I read the judgment but, only today. Completely. But, sir, <laughs> kindly see, sir, that's the latest judgment of the Supreme Court. And after all, the Constitution, the founding fathers of the Constitution, they had made an Article 141 saying that uh, whatever is said by the Supreme Court is a law of the land. Mm -hmm. And we, the citizens, we are bound to follow the Supreme Court judgments, despite they being even a... Uh, see, there's a judgment which uh, anybody can see. Anybody can uh, say it's an absurd judgment because making it runs counter to all the laws. Uh, making and uh, laying down informa laying information to the police uh, saves the limitation. What it is it? Uh, <laughs> because the terminology was complete. Complaint. Completely yes. separate. Dankumar, sir. Ganesh versus, I think it is Ganesh versus Saranappa, right? Where they said uh, informant. First informant. Informant and complainant. 2014 Supreme Court. It is wrong to call him a complainant. Complainant. But only, only information. It is only information. Information. And on the one what is given to the court as defined in CR, CRPC. Correct. Uh, but he has, uh, see, it is for the purpose of enabling the court to take ordinances. Here, but sir, the, we call this as I never call this as a complaint. No, so sir. Some, even yeah. even even in today's topic, we were dealing about cognizance. Yes. Even when there were constitutional benches like MOA, say, sure. several three judge benches, more than uh, say around ten or more than a dozen three judge benches. Now mm -hmm. we had another judgment by Justice Banumati mm -hmm. saying that pro issuance of process that is the point of taking cognizance. When the court was concerned Krupp. with an amendment of a complaint. Where Krupp Finance very clearly said that uh, process is issued at the post cognizant stage. Absolutely, absolutely. 2005, correct. Uh, the issue and process is totally different. It is after identifying the accused. After cognizant 201, 202, they come. Exactly. And after that, 203. After crossing the hurdle of 203, we go to 204. 4, 4. <laughs> So but sir, this Justice Banamadi's judgment, still it holds good. No, no, no. It doesn't hold good. It is there. On, <laughs> in the it is wrong. I, patently I, wrong. Prem, didn't you see my article on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had, I had read that article. But kindly see, sir, even the Supreme Court has not taken note of uh, this particular illegality. What about Anil Kumar versus Ayyappa? <laughs> True. There are, there are judges following that. Supreme Court itself following the same judgment. So we were talking That's about quite RR Chari, correct. See, we had enough discussion in our forum, and the Professor Carl also was there. 
we talked about the came non avadi what is sudden provocation what is grave provocation what is loss of power control all that i used yesterday simply said no no there was intention say sir i got one doubt so you may you all of you may clarify to me she we say sir can i uh, take some time definitely definitely sir okay see uh, first of all to the uh, an act of the accused should fall under 299 right then right. we take to 300 let us say that he had intention to cause the death 300 Then we see whether there was, there was any exception or not. Let us take exception number one. What are the preconditions? There should have been provocation. That should have been sudden. That provocation must have the potential to make the person to lose his power of self-control. Control. To that extent, it should be grave. So thereafter. when he is not when he is not in his senses when he has already lost his power of self control there is something realizing what is happening then where is the question of intention thereafter hmm at the time when he causes the injury after having lost the power of self control can you say Correct. that he has got intention he behaves like a madman ah uh, yes he becomes a madman how can he say that there is intention if there was no intention it won't fall even under 299 so Correct. therefore whether we have to start from 299 300 then exception or we have to start for exception number 1 first the exception number 1 <laughs> makes it under 299 is it not huh? so exception two... number 1 brings it down to 299 from 300 no 300 299 into which class 299 class 1 Class one requires intention. Here you say there was no intention. He is a madman, as you said. Where is the question of intention? It won't even fall under two ninety nine. Then can we say that he is liable for punishment only under three twenty six? A lot of issues on there. No, <laughs> even for three twenty six, also there must be an intention to cause a grave injury. Not the intention, voluntariness. Huh. Voluntary. Voluntariness. How it comes? You must not mentria, and it won't be a rash and negligent act. Also, three not four a will not come. Will not come. Yeah. Not. Then, so the, this topic we will not move up. See, the purely academic. This will not be useful for any lawyer, for that matter. No, no judge is going to hear whatever we say in this. <laughs> academic only to induce our lawyers to look into these provisions very minutely. For the purpose of taking a defence. For the purpose of taking a defence in a case. That's all. This defence, we, 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 nobody can succeed on this defence. I am sure of that. Going with the standard of judges, we have today. No, no, not only that. Once you say, suppose you take a particular defence, then you will say you are admitting the offence. Then unless you prove the defence beyond reasonable doubt, you are not entitled. <laughs> to that is the stand now. <laughs> you are admitting the offence. You are admitting the commission. You are admitting your presence. Everything is there. There was uh, one case which I argued last week. See, there is a case under the box. So, I was disputing the age of the girl. They said, "What are the documents you have filed to prove the age that she was more than eighteen years?" I have produced uh, the uh, the Zahar card, Khara's copy, and other documents. No, no, they cannot be believed. I do not want you to believe. You reject all of this, all those things. But our debate cannot start from this document because it is not my burden. let them show the document to show that he was less than she was less than 18 years first let them prove then you can look at whether uh, i have disproved it or not by means of my documents or not kindly don't start your debate from my document leave them alone <laughs> hmm. then they were caught then they should notice in that they granted leave <laughs> see how just see first question what is her age so i said that she was born in 18 years how do you say that These are all the documents you have produced. No, no, these documents cannot be proved, cannot be believed, because uh, this Aadhaar card before entering the data, but in Aadhaar card it the no inquiry is conducted regarding the data. All right, reject it. Then Haras Cobb you could have created. All right, reject it. Then she is more than uh, then um, you are liable for conviction. No, cannot be. What is her age? You reject my our documents, my documents. What is her age? You prove that. All who turned hostage, there is no evidence regarding age. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. We, as this, as this, as session judges, 
we were asked from the judicial academy how do you, how do you explain a, a, a person committing rape on a member of the scheduled caste on the ground that she is a member of the scheduled caste yes we answered no you that no you that she is committed on offense committed on the ground not on the court <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there is a question whether uh, the accused is to be tried on, by the special court under the Pope's Act or ACST Act. In this case, yes. Or if the suppose the girl is a minor, thirteen years old girl belonging to scheduled caste is raped. Both are special courts, which huh? will prevail. Both are special <laughs> courts, which will prevail. Which is yes. Pope's Act, which is special court because it is a question of jurisdiction of a particular yes. court to decide. You are right. Court will try. So this question came, and there was no uniformity in our state. On the administrative side, the file was referred to me. I said, "No, no, this is a matter to be decided on the judicial side." Then the matter was referred to my bench. I said that this case used to be tried only by the Pope's Act. Among the two, I cited some judgments here and there. I said that among the two judgments, which is more special, more specific, I said it is a child, Pope's Act, and the latest act also. <laughs> Even before the Pope's Act, there was a CST yes. Act was there, so the legislature clearly. And there also, non abstentive clause is there, you know. If Prem was there, then I would have got him, uh, got from him at least fifteen judgments on this. There will be more judgments than reasoning. From that uh, library, I could have got. You would have the nineteen seventy four, fifty eight, ninety eight. I would have been benefited. <laughs> A remarkable, remarkable memory power for him. Mm. He's a he's a ready reckoner. Yes, ready reckoner. A very see, I've been trying to cultivate that practice. Highly important. Too late for me at this age. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Sir. And in fact, like Prem said, uh, uh, sir, we would like to have you uh, uh, with a specific topic, and we'll do the debate deliberations. But uh, you like to introduce that issue, whichever that is. Uh, I mean, like it is surely I have to come. What is this? There is no question of request, and uh, it is my duty because I am enriching myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, just now I closed my meeting here. Immediately I thought of this our uh, this thing uh, webinar. Just I opened it with my cell phone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's nice to so, see all uh, on screen. Uh, Nagamuthu, sir, on the point, uh, the jurisdiction of the POXO court or the SCST special court <clears throat> on uh, deciding a, or trying a case uh, of a minor uh, a girl belong to CST, there is a decision by the Kerala High Court in 2018 yes. that uh, there uh, a, a CST special court uh, trans uh, uh, transferred the case to uh, send, send the records to the uh, as a boxer special court yes, yes, uh, on the ground on the ground that uh, she she is a, the victim is a minor yes that yes, was that was yes. that was challenged before the uh, kerala high court but yes. the high court dismissed the application on the ground that section 25 of the uh, child rights act okay. uh, uh, the action taken by the cst court is correct because both are special courts and uh, I, I will pass on that decision. Uh, yes, but I will, uh, will post the judgment of Madras High Court also on the very same point. Okay, okay. Fully agree with this view. Concurring with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, as we come to the end of the 271st session, what a way to restart. Thank you, sir, Ramana, sir, for triggering the debate. Thank you. Sir, one information I want, sir. Uh, yeah. is, uh, this is Ram Kumar book on CRP says came out, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, thank you. Sir. It's not on CRPC. I am, I am, I am thinking of writing books on specific topics in criminal law. CRPC, we have already got so many books on CRP. I am thinking of writing separate so small but books. No, but the notes I am getting from this platform and beyond La CLC is very informative from for me as a teacher. So I am eagerly reading that book. Okay. 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 Uh, so I mean now. Uh, making this uh, evening worthwhile and uh, the, the, the uh, interaction that we had. <coughs> Thank uh, uh, the uh, speaker of the day, Justice Ram Kumar, sir, uh, those who participated, Justice M.V. Ramana, Justice Gordon Ram, sir, P.S. Ramana, sir, Justice Ramakrishnan, sir, Justice Nagamuthu, sir, and of course, uh, Swamin, sir, uh, and all of you, wonderful participants who made this uh, 
evening and especially rose madam how are you ma'am fine sir it was too informative the whole session thank you and we had uh, dr mohanar bulla sir also and uh, to be back in the family to be back uh, on this platform it's just nostalgic and it's also invigorating and also enlightening so till we meet next time please do take care and stay safe thank you, thank you. all of you for being part and parcel of this legal empowerment through interaction lecture series thank, thank you, you.